Good afternoon. Hi. Am I? Hello. Hello. Sorry about that. Um, everyone, please stay on mute for this portion. And good afternoon. Welcome to today's care partner training at Insight Memory Care Center. My name is Kay, and I'm happy to be here as your MC. Oops. If you're new to Insight, we're a nonprofit in Northern Virginia. Our mission is to provide specialized care, support, and education for individuals in all stages of memory or cognitive impairment, their care partners, and the community. Our vision is a community where those living with memory or cognitive impairment and their care partners can achieve the highest quality of life. Today's program is part of our monthly care partner training series. So each month we have a class in a different topic presented by a guest speaker. These classes are geared towards family, caregivers, caring for a loved one at home. They are free and open to the public. public. Learn about our organization and find upcoming classes at insightmcc.org. Today's topic is the art of activities and engagement, how to reconnect with someone with dementia and learn ways to keep your loved one engaged in personalized activities. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into chat for the Q&A session. I'm really happy to invite today's speaker, Melissa Long, the Director of Education and Support at Insight. Melissa is a certified recreational therapist, certified dementia practitioner, and a licensed brief cognitive assessment tool practitioner. She has been providing care to older adults for 19 plus years and is also the recipient recipient of the Atra Frank L. Basile Clinician of the Year for 2016. This award recognizes the recipient's outstanding contribution to recreational therapy through creative and innovative programming. So Melissa, welcome to today's class. Thank you for being here and I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. Just waiting for the slide to move. <laughs> Bear with me a second here. All right, so no two people with dementia and no two families are alike in their needs for care and support. Maintaining or enhancing quality of life is the ultimate objective. This was from the World Alzheimer's Report in 2013. And before we get started, I do wanna make you all aware that there is some electrical construction going on outside, not far from the center. If the internet does cut out, um, I apologize, we will stop. And then I will do a private recording and we will get it posted up on the website um, by tomorrow for you. So I wanna give a little data background on engagement. Click forward on me, sorry about that. One in four older adults say they feel isolated from other people. It has a mind of its own. Um, from other people, at least some of the time, and one in three say their lack of regular companionship according to the National Poll on Health and Aging. Approximately 28% or 13.8 million older adults live alone. In the same study referenced above, living alone was highly associated with feeling lonely, and 60% of those who lived alone reported feeling a lack of companionship, and 41 felt isolated. Isolated older adults are more likely to develop cardiovascular disease, to develop dementia, than those who are socially connected. Isolation can lead to greater mobility problems, decreased independence, and this leads to a greater risk of falls, increased risk of severe depression, and earlier morbidity. AARP's Public Policy Institute 
recent study confirms that Medicare is spending $6.7 billion annually in result to public health issue. It also indicates that the health risks of prolonged isolation are equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. And understand these studies are a little farther back from before COVID happened. So imagine the numbers now, because um, this was before a pandemic. So what is engagement? It is the psychological state of well-being and active involvement that is triggered by meaningful activities and causes people with dementia to be absorbed by the activity, more energetic and in a more positive mood. A growing body of research has found that participation in activities is associated with increased confidence, self-esteem in dementia, and increased sense of well-being and is deemed useful to improve social bonding and mood to reduce loneliness, challenging behaviors, and medication consumption. So when we think about engagement, I have some tips for you that can help you have a positive experience. So keeping a person's skills and abilities in mind. Can they hold small things in their hands? Can they stand for an extended period of time? So you kind of want to look at anything that they may be having a hard time with. Pay special attention to what the person enjoys. Do they like certain smells, certain sports, certain foods? Consider if the person begins activities without direction. Do they need encouragement to start it just to do the first step of the puzzle? Beware of physical problems. Are they a toe walker? Do they shuffle their feet? Do they have a shoulder injury? Focus on enjoyment, not the achievement. So we're looking at quality of life with that. Encourage involvement in daily life, even if it's done wrong. Re relate their activities to their past work life. Utilize the skills they acted out daily in their activity choices. Look for their favorites. It makes things more enticing for them. Consider the time of day. Is it too early and they're sleepy? Is it the end of the day and they're sundowning? Adjust the activities to the disease stage. For instance, before the diagnosis, they might have been able to play bridge, but now they may only be able to sort the suits. And as they progress, they may only be able to sort the colors. And uh, lastly, they may only be able to shuffle. So here's some data on social engagement contributes to greater physical, mental, and emotional health and well being in older adults. As you can see in the blue, this is where the numbers are without engagement. And the gray is when they do have engagement. And you see the high increase, especially in mental health, um, just the difference that having engagement does. All right. So engagement provides people with what? The ability to live longer. They are less likely to suffer from cognitive decline or depression, experience decreased risk of disability and functional mobility decline. In other words, people who are engaged are healthier, active, contribute to their communities and stay connected. This word cloud describes the feelings expressed by older adults who indicated they were engaged in various activities within their communities. So they felt fulfilled, important, engaged, humble, accomplished, relevant, empowered, proud, purposeful, and needed. Everyone wants those feelings. So what are your challenges at home? The person can't do the same activities anymore. They can't do things independently. They follow you around. Previous activities are not safe for them anymore. People don't want to leave their home, and that's very common as the disease progresses. The person refuses when asked if they want to participate. The person has delusions, is paranoid, is exit-seeking, and is confused. So 
someone can't do these same activities, like I was explaining with cards, you just have to alter them to where they can do them. A person who doesn't want to do things independently wants to follow you around. What can you find that really entices them, that favorite thing that might allow you that 10 minutes to have space? Or do you need to bring someone in from the outside, family, um, a hired caregiver? Because remember, the caregiver needs to take care of themselves too. So what resources can you use if they have a dependency on you? Uh, previous activities aren't safe. Say your husband used to do woodworking and using an electric saw may not be the best idea anymore. So how can you adapt so that he can still do things? Um, they don't want to leave their home, which is very common, and you don't want to make them, so bring things to them. Um, person refuses when they're asked if they want to participate. My rule of thumb is don't ever ask. Say, hey, I got something for us, and take them by the hand and lead them. Um, because a lot of times when they're asked, they don't understand the question and they'll just say no because it's easier. Um, having delusions and paranoia, um, those are things that we want to acknowledge and empathize with them, but then take them away from those things that may be triggering it. For instance, I had a patient in the past who thought there were snakes in the room and I said, oh, I'm so sorry you're seeing those. Why don't we go over here where it's safer? And it was really a cord on a lamp. And so you kind of have to be like Sherlock Holmes. Um, you do, there are some people that are exit seeking and they usually have a reason for it. So are they needing to go to the bathroom? Is it 4.30 and that's when they left work every day? So maybe we need to find activities that time of day so that they are engaged in something and they don't realize what time it is. Um, you know, are they hungry? And that's why they're walking. It's not that they're trying to go out the door. They just don't know where the kitchen is anymore. So being that Sherlock and investigating and um, figuring out those little pieces are so important. Some key communication techniques. The 90 second rule is so important. So when you ask a question, hey, John, do you want to wear a shirt in your closet? Why don't you go get one? Give him 90 seconds. If he doesn't answer, ask again in a more simpler form. John, do you want to get a shirt out of your closet today? Walk him there. If that's still too much and he isn't answering, go to a yes or no question. Do you want to wear this shirt or this shirt? And show him too. Be humorous about it. Have fun. As this uh, picture says, people with a good sense of humor have a better sense of life. We've got to make it fun because this is not an easy journey. So your approach. If you notice a person's attention span, waning or frustration level increases, it's likely time to end or modify the activity you're doing with them. So here are some modifications you could do. Help get the activity started. Sometimes they can't initiate it. Offer support and supervision. Some people need a cue for every step. Concentrate on the process, not the result. It's all about enjoying yourself in the moment. Be flexible. Always gonna have something in your back pocket because they may get distracted and decide that's not what they wanna do anymore. Break activities into simple, easy follow directions. And that may be writing them down, that may be sitting there giving the instruction. Assist with difficult parts of the task. So if you know it's gonna be too hard for them, do the one piece they can't do, and then that will empower them to finish it. Let the individual know he or she is needed. They want a sense of purpose, so how can we do that? Make a connection with them. Obviously, some of them, as they go down this journey, they go into a part of their memory that you may not have been a part of. And how can you relate to them in that memory, even though you weren't a part of it, and find that connection with them? Don't criticize or correct the person. That's just going to lead to friction between the two of you and have agitation. We want to avoid those situations as much as possible. Encourage self-expression. You know, someone wants to wear a leotard over a pair of jeans and that makes them happy and they're in the house or not. It'll give us a good laugh for the day, right? But it will also allow them to be in what they want to wear. And involve the person through conversation. Even if they have aphasia and they have loss of words, that doesn't mean they don't want to have a conversation. 
I have a client I work with who has um, pretty bad aphasia and I still have conversations with her telling her about current events and different topics that I know she likes. And periodically I'll get a full sentence out of her with her reaction because she's still so passionate about that topic that I'm bringing up. And those are moments of joy. That's why we do our job, right? Um, and we, we love the people we work with with dementia. So remember, there's still a person in there and every so often you're gonna get, they're gonna come out. So let's treat them that way. Substitute an activity for a behavior. So if you know they're gonna try and walk out of the house at 4.30, because that's when they gotta leave work, find something that they really enjoy to help with um, so that they don't have that sensation to leave because they're too busy to think about it. And the true hold one of always is if they don't want to do something, go away for 10 minutes and come back. They may not remember from 10 minutes ago, or they might have changed their mind. All right, so we're going to do a case study next. This is Dorothy, and she has vascular dementia with significant expressive aphasia. So that's when you have your loss of words. She self-propels in her wheelchair. She grew up on a farm with 10 brothers and sisters worked in a hospital cafeteria, has four daughters, 12 grandchildren, many great and great, great grandchildren. Previous routines and interests included having coffee with cream and sugar, reading the newspaper, watching NASCAR on TV, talking with family, household and yard chores. She likes dogs and kids, her Christian faith, and she's not really a joiner. She's more of um, isolation. She not isolates, but she's more of an introvert. So what are some activities we would do with her? Well, she likes dogs. Maybe a real dog isn't the right fit, but getting an animatronic dog would work. How about shucking corn? She lived on a farm that could have been one of her chores. And then she feels like she's providing purpose because she's helping with prepare a meal, which she enjoyed doing. Or getting the paper for her and coffee and having her tell you what the current events are and asking for her input on what's in the news. So why do activity abilities change? As we know, you do all these wonderful activities with everybody um, at home, but then you start to notice they're not working. Well, some of the reasons are the lack of initiation due to brain changes, difficulty with planning and sequencing, distraction, confusion, sorry, I'm not sure what's going on with this. I apologize. There we go. Sleepiness or depression and anxiety. So some of this is due to brain changes. Some may also be due to comorbidities, medications. So the question is, is it the dementia or is it depression? Is it an infection causing delirium? Is it lack of sleep? Okay, I'm not even touching anything. This thing has a mind of its own. <laughs> All right. So next, what are activities? They are anything can be an activity and anyone can provide an activity. So that means you can do it even as a loved one. So here are some examples, exercise, sweeping the floor, doing a puzzle. Um, filling an ice tray, sorting socks. Um, the one in the left side, this was actually a client of mine um, where I took him into CVS. It was his wife's birthday and he hadn't bought her a gift in years. And I picked two things up and showed them to him and said, which one do you want to give her for her birthday? And he picked one and then got to write her a card. And the sense of joy with him was just priceless that he got to have that moment and go back to the house and present that to her just meant so much to him. And this middle one is actually a video. This is a, another client I work with. She used to be a ballerina. And so we would dance, whether it was in a chair and which on her good days, we'd stand up and dance and we would practice our positions. Um, so there's all sorts of different things that you can do with people. So the benefits of activities. Overall, good quality of life, 
to socialize or to be with others, to be productive or to contribute, to experience success, and of course, to play. You wanna be able to build and retain skills with them and to experience growth and learning. And this can bring them success, purposeful, meaningful pleasure. So engaging in activities can help regulate sleep patterns, decrease challenging behavior symptoms, decrease agitation, decrease exit-seeking behavior, decrease depressive symptoms, foster relationships and feelings of belonging, provide structure and be part of the familiar routine, help build or retain skills, and improve their mood. So now we're going to get to the good stuff. I know this is what you guys really want is ideas. So here is a list of some online resources that can help provide activities. Hands-on is always best, but you can always supplement with digital things. We are going to send you a hard copy of this afterwards with a follow-up email, so you don't have to write this down. Um, the art one, actually, the Smithsonian does a phenomenal dementia program. They don't have one right now because it's summer break, um, but you can sign up for that, and it's lovely. Um, exercise. Silver Sneakers is a great program and they actually have it online on YouTube. They have meditation, chair exercise, standing exercise, um, and you don't have to pay for it. Um, and the last thing to go with someone on their dementia journey is music and the retention of um, enjoying it, knowing lyrics. So there's two links here. One is just for um, elder songs with lyrics and the other one um, are spiritual songs with lyrics so that they can follow along or you can because you might not know all the words. And the last one is a channel on YouTube with a bunch of trivia um, from history to science to general knowledge. Um, it does about 20 questions per trivia, um, gives them I think about 10 seconds to 10 to 15 seconds to answer each one. Um, but there's plenty of other resources like that out there. So that just gives you some alternatives. So next, yarn. Let's talk about yarn. So your wife used to knit and she doesn't have the success to do that anymore, whether it's because of fine motor or the processing piece of it. So what can we do instead? Well, the next step in line would be something like this. This is a knitting machine where you would put on the yarn for and she would just crank the handle on the side. This is a children's version. They do have an adult version. Um, so she could still have things that come out that you can actually utilize. Now, if that's becoming too much, the next option is to have her roll yarn balls because sometimes it's just the texture of the yarn that's stimulating for them. And that's a simple task that most knitters and crocheters learn. Next, a balloon. Everyone loves balloons. It makes you think of happy times, birthdays, right? So what can you do with a balloon? Well, put on some music and bat it around. I have done this in trainings with staff, I've done it with families, I've done it with participants, and I cannot say in the past almost 20 years there has been anybody who has not enjoyed the balloon and started laughing and smiling while we do it. Next, say your husband was a woodworker and that, you know, the saw may not be the best choice, so what could we do differently? Well, we can get a small, simple wood project that doesn't need tools. Um, with simple step-by-step -step directions to follow. And then if they get to that next level where following the directions is too hard, getting a sensory um, activity kit where it has screws and nails and all those things, and you can use the tools to move them in it. Um, so he still has the sensation of using the tools. Um, that's an option. So 10 additional ideas for engaging individuals with dementia. A tablet or smartphone can be a useful tool for social connection, as well as access to puzzles, games, and other activities. Um, out of tablets, um, iPads are a simpler format to understand, um, but there are the GrandPad, there's Android, so there's lots of options out there. Um, these digital devices can be very useful for people with dementia, from online games, puzzles, dedicated dementia apps to Skype and YouTube. They provide a way to stay engaged with others and enjoy a range of activities. Next, we have tap into their memories of past events. So for many people with dementia, 
A sense of movement and rhythm is often retained. Listening to music, dancing, or contact with babies, children, or animals provide positive feelings. People with dementia also have excellent memories of past events, and looking through old photos, memorabilia, and books can help a person to recall those earlier times. Continue to go on outings as long as you and the patient or family member are comfortable with. People in early stages of dementia may still enjoy going out to places they enjoyed in the past. For example, a person might enjoy going to a favorite restaurant, a park, shopping mall, swimming pool, museum, or theater. Keep going to these outings as long as you are comfortable doing it. Dance to music from their generation. Find a CD or nowadays streaming <laughs> music from your loved one's time. If they are able, encourage them to dance and shuffle around a bit with you. They will not only benefit from the activity, but from the music of their generation too. Restorative yoga is ideal for improving balance and flexibility. Restorative yoga is a lower intensity form of yoga focused on breathing, posture, and gentle movements. Yoga can improve balance and flexibility, which are both important for a group at high, higher risk for falls. Chair yoga is also a good alternative for people who have lost some mobility or have a lower body injury. Create a memory bag. Fill the bag with items reminiscent of their late teens, early 20s. Scented products work well for this as scents are strongly tied to our memory. Try including soap, perfumes, and aftershave or holiday scents like gingerbread, pine, and peppermint. Coin sorting. Sorting coins into small glass or ceramic bowls is fun, soothing, and may even give your senior a sense of purpose if you ask them to help you sort your loose change. Try a simple craft. Try making beaded necklaces or decorating a bird feeder, producing items that give the person with dementia a sense of satisfaction and the chance to see it. In use gives the activity purpose. Have some spa time and engage the senses with the hand and arm massage. Dementia activities for a spa time are calming and enjoyable. Begin with relaxing music and maybe string up some small twinkling lights or have a few flameless battery candles set around for ambience. Aromatherapy is also wonderful such as lavender which helps calm and relax or rose, lemon, and vanilla. Bake cookies, who doesn't like to smell that? Most of us love the smell of cookies in the oven. The aromatherapy value can be especially meaningful for people with dementia. It can also be an important opportunity to reminisce about baking or cooking a favorite family treat. So the best part about all those activities I just gave you is in that follow-up email, you're going to get a list of 101 different activities that you can utilize. Um, please remember the magic activities is not what is done. It's in the doing. And you can see in this picture, this lovely patient of mine really wanted to play dominoes, but that's not quite how you play dominoes, but she was happy and she was using her fingers and engaging with me. So that's all that mattered. Thank you, Melissa. You're welcome. Let's go to Q&A. So we do have some questions, um, one of them in chat. Does Melissa offer speech therapy to people with dementia? So I am not a speech therapist. I am a recreational therapist, but I can guide you to a speech therapist. Right, and a few emailed questions. Um, can you explain the difference between distraction versus re-engagement? Okay. So distraction is like a diversional activity. So that can just be taking a walk where engaging someone is really having structure to it um, and really just um, giving them directions to follow. They're retaining a skill from using it. Um, so it may be that you're doing a crossword puzzle with them. Um, and so they're retaining that ability to still read words. Okay, great. And um, 
are activities mimicking their work life? Is that beneficial? Absolutely. Um, so doing that, those are things that are embedded in their brain and they're going to remember those on how to do those a lot longer than other things. So absolutely. That's a really good thing. And they usually enjoyed it because they did it for so long with work. <laughs> And a question from chat. How many activities in a day is realistic? That's a great you, question. Oh, sorry, I was <laughs> sorry. There's a delay, I know. I um how many activities in a day is realistic? I know time and patience is needed, but does it make sense to plan two or three in an afternoon or too much? Two or three is perfect. So um, when I worked in communities, normally what we did is no more than 30 minutes for one activity for attention span. And we would do three in the morning and three in the afternoon. Um, so it was an hour and a half, hour and a half. That allowed naps, meals, because if you keep doing things nonstop all day, you're stressing their brain out. And then you may have more behaviors. Just like us, there's only so much that we can do um, in a day without getting tired. So we need to think about that with them because their brain um, gets tired faster than ours does. And if you plan out um, a couple of activities and they only want to do one, then you could save the two for the next day, right? Absolutely. Okay. So uh, the last question is, are Melissa's services covered by Medicare or is it private pay? So rec therapy is private pay right now. I have been up on Capitol Hill many, many times. We used to be covered under the three-hour therapy rule. And unfortunately, we got pulled from that. Um, but we have been up there advocating time and time again that we need to be included with PT, OT, and speech. Um, and unfortunately, every time we get some traction, the elections happen and we have to start all over again. So please write your public officials telling them that you want to include it in Medicare and Medicaid, especially um, TBI and dementia truly benefit from it because sometimes you graduate out of PT and that's not what somebody needs. So yes, please be out there and advocating for us. We would greatly appreciate it. Great. And oh, one more. Um, where do you see TV fitting into this? We usually don't have it on, but the care aid is putting it on to old shows. There are other activities, not just this, but is there a place for it? Yes. So at least they're doing old shows. So I got to give them credit for that and not putting on the news because that's usually the where all the care aids put it on. Um, and news can actually agitate and make things worse. So I actually encourage if you need to block out the news. Um, uh, so I would doing I Love Lucy, the Dick Van Dyke show, things shows like that that um, they remember are always good because they're also short. There's not a huge plot line to follow. Um, the other thing um, on TV, because most people have Netflix and Hulu and that is doing, um, a show about animals, show about cooking, keeping those type of things on. So it's not a drama with tension. It's not the news. There's not a long um, plot line to follow. So that's how I would utilize TV with those. Great. Next question. My mother does not want to go to Insight Memory Care Center. Should I continue to insist she go? I think the big question is, um, can you find out why she doesn't want to go? I think investigating that a little bit, is it how she's getting ready to go? Is it the group that she's in? Does that need to be re-looked at? Um, so I definitely would have a talk with the case managers and see if they can help you um, investigate that a little further. You definitely don't want to force anything, but I think finding out um, what might be triggering that. The next question is, how can I find a recreational therapist in the Fredericksburg Culpeper area? Yeah, that's kind of out there. Um, you may not. <laughs> um, there is a website, and I can give that to Kate to include in the follow-up email of a directory of rec therapists. Um, and I did see a follow-up to the question I was asking, what triggering your mom? You're saying it's activities she doesn't like, then that's a perfect conversation to have with Brittany, um, our director of education, because we, are, we strive ourselves on doing person-centered activities and talking with her and letting her know some things your mom does like so that we can make sure we get them on the calendar for her, I think is very important. Um, so I think that would be one thing to look at with that. 
uh, Sterling, you would want to talk to um, Olivia or to Selena. Selena thank you. <laughs> Okay, if that's all the questions we have, I want to thank Melissa for all of her time she has shared with us today, even through all the really annoying frustration technical issues we're experiencing. Uh, feel, feel free to get in touch with her if you have any questions. Um, let's see. So I wanted to share some coming events at Insight. Next month's care partner training is Caregiver's Guide to Understanding Care Options. On September 14th at 1 p.m., our guest speaker will discuss how dementia care is not one size fits all. Uh, we have Memory Cafe tomorrow at 4 p.m. in our Sterling location. Um, join us for Beach Day to discuss summer traditions and make sand art. Fairfax Memory Cafe is on the 17th. Learn more about the web telescope and make galaxy mixed media art. Dementia Friendly Fairfax, Dementia Friends Information Session is virtual on the 18th at 10 a.m. Take the first steps to learn more about dementia and helping the community. Free memory, scare, um, free memory screenings <laughs> is available on the 22nd at 10 a.m. located at the Wellness Center for Older Adults in Fairfax. Don't forget to sign up for our Mind and Body Workshop beginning on September 13th at our Sterling location, where you will meet with others for a four-week early stage couples program. There are just a few programs available to you. These are just a few programs available to you. Um, there you go. So for more information, please visit our website at insightmcc.org. Also, there's a variety of ways you can support Insight as a nonprofit organization through monthly and vehicle no donations, the Amazon Smile Program, and workplace giving. And you can keep in touch with Insight through our various social media platforms. If Insight can be a resource to you, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are so glad you were here with us today to learn more as a care partner. And thank you again to Melissa for being here and sharing her expertise. And thank you all to our care partners for joining us and have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye. <laughs>